All right, guys, we got some exciting news for you in the world of crypto. We got to talk about that the SEC is about to get subpoenaed and perhaps destroyed by Congress. Now, Patrick McHenry has been trying to get the FTX docs from the SEC since February, but the SEC does not want to give them. I wonder why. Maybe Gary Gensler had something to do with Sam Bankman fried Now, I still don't really think he actually um, basically directed Sam Bankman fried to do the stuff he did, but there could be definitely some gross neglect, and Gary Gensler was definitely cutting some corners while regulating SBF. That anyone can actually believe in, and people should believe that, because he did take Sam Bateman Freed to dinner just months before the FTX collapse, and he was actively helping them get around regulations. So McHenry knows this, and uh, he knows Ginzer might be hiding something. So he's been trying to get the documents since February. Of course, the SEC has not complied, and he's tried to back up, basically like rebuff Congress from getting these. But that's all about to change as they could issue a subpoena, and if the SEC or Ginza refuses for a subpoena, there could be severe legal consequences. So, if these documents have anything dirty on them, we will see soon, and SEC and Gary Ginzer might be fired, and the SEC might be disgraced again, which actually could cause the SEC to lose a lot of power over crypto. It could even reform the SEC along some, uh, some guidelines that they said earlier this year, where the agency doesn't have nearly as much power as they did, and that obviously would be good for the crypto market. So basically, like, he wants to um, obtain communication records between the SEC and Justice Department staff over the rest of SBF, and he wants to see, like, what those actually are, and it, did the SEC try to stave off the Justice Department from doing much to FTX, and what kind of connections between Gary Gensler, the SEC, and FTX do they actually have? And of course, like, Gary Gensler and the SEC doesn't really want that to come out. But they, it might have to come out because Congress is going to issue a subpoena. So Representative Patrick McHenry, who chairs the United States House Financial Services Committee, has suggested that he may try to subpoena the Securities and Exchange Commission over documents related to former FTX CEO SBF. Um, basically, in the September 27th hearing on oversight of the commission, McHenry claimed Chair Gary Gensler had made efforts to choke off the digital asset ecosystem in attention in addition to refusing to be transparent with Congress in connections between Commission, FTX, and SBF, that's true, the committee chair said the government body had made multiple requests for documents regarding the timing of SBF's arrest given the previously scheduled appearance before Congress. Seven months later, the committee has not received a single non-public document, and there are many, many non-public documents, and that's what they're actually going after. So they grilled them on that a lot. And uh, McHenry is just very interested in this stuff. Obviously, part of it is for political play because McHenry is obviously from the uh, Republican Party and Gary Gensler is a Democratic nominee. But Gary Gensler has been given crypto such a hard time that he deserves to be given a hard time himself. And the thing is, there's a very good chance that Gensler is hiding something himself, which could actually cause him to go down in flames, which is basically what everyone in the crypto industry wants. And that would disgrace the SEC, which would actually make the SEC um, lose a lot of credibility over this crypto. Gensler has been taking L's left and right in the, uh, in the uh, judicial realm. And um, even in the legislative realm, he actually might be hiding something which could completely tank the agency's credibility. And that's exactly what McHenry is actually after. So we have a very antagonistic Congress to Gary Gensler now, and he might actually either personally be in trouble, or if he's not personally in trouble, he might actually um, be in trouble um, via Congress and what he did with the SEC. So hopefully some of these answers actually come out and hopefully he does have to give up the documents and he has to go with a congressional subpoena. And uh, writing on that, the SEC has given some positive signals, maybe trying to stave off this, in terms of the Bitcoin ETF. And the thing is like, yes, they did delay it, but one of the analysts at Bloomberg actually did draw attention to the development in a recent tweet. Um, 
He wrote, rumors from the ETF guys, SEC are bringing in relevant parties for meetings. This hap- this hasn't happened before. So, you know, when they weren't actually like considering uh, approving it, they didn't actually bring in the relevant people for meetings, but now they actually have. Yes, while the SEC delayed spot Bitcoin filings last week, they also sent issuers comments to address their S1 filings related to plumbing legal. This is a break from the typical pattern of delay, delay, radio silence, then denial. A welcome sign, in my opinion, although the timeline is unclear. Um, I think they have until like January 10th to actually get this through. So there is a big silver lining in all of this that they could actually approve the ETF very soon because they are actually sending... Um, relevant parties and having them for meetings, probably to iron some things out for the ETF. In response to inquiries about what plumbing means in the context of ETFs, uh, he clarified the creation, redemption process, custody, legal liability, stuff like that, which is stuff you really want to get all your ducks in a row if you're actually going to approve an ETF. So the prospects of them approving an ETF did just get better. These elements are crucial for efficient functioning of ETFs and maintaining their price alignment with the assets they track. Very, very good and a very, very welcome um, change. And I do think this does actually signal that they might be ready to approve an ETF. And this isn't all that surprising, like given that BlackRock, Fidelity, and all those other guys also submitted ETFs, they got to either approve them all or deny them all. And before they actually approve everyone, they kind of have to bring them in. Plus, the Grayscale lawsuit has the SEC on its toes. The best case scenario is the SEC approves everyone in mid-October. I think the worst case scenario is they'll probably approve one in January or March. So there is some like bullish things related to the SEC. They're bringing in people for meetings. It's not radio silence anymore. And it looks like they're finally getting ready to approve instead of deny sometime in the next couple of months. I don't really know when. FTX's trial or SBF's trial is about to go online. And um, everyone's saying it's a very, very hard defense for uh, SBF. I think some people are going like his political connections are going to save him. His political connections are not going to save him. SBF is a toxic, toxic asset right now. And people basically want to stay as far away from SBF as possible. So they're not going to actually save them at all. Um, I think he's like up a creek without a paddle. And many of his closest friends and also his uh, co-runners like of the scheme are testifying against him. So the thing is, like, I don't think he's going to be able to convince a jury that he's not guilty at all. Um, obviously, like, you know... He's getting, he's trying to get media on his side by his like BS um, effective altruism, which obviously is like a nothing burger because he scammed billi- uh, billions of dollars away from people and he used a very small part of that for effective altruism. So I, I know he's trying to get mainstream media to like shill for him with his altruism and getting and trying to get mainstream media to like him. But realistically, we all know the truth behind this guy. There's so many pe- people that actually want a piece of uh, flesh from this guy that I don't think he's going to be able to convince anyone that his effective altruism is supposed to keep him out of jail. And his lawyers are even saying like it's a very, very hard defense for SBF. Did he ruin crypto? He probably made regulators have more excuses to regulate us. I don't think he actually ruined crypto, but... He did put us behind by a little bit, and he did actually make people lose a lot of confidence in crypto, although some of those people are slowly coming back now. And Coinbase did get approval in Singapore. Yes, um, they gave Coinbase approval. This is another reason why Coinbase is a very good stock to buy. Uh, They can actually offer crypto payment services in Singapore, and retail and institutional investors in Singapore can now access Coinbase crypto payment services. Uh, Coinbase has received a major payment institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS, underscoring the cryptocurrency exchange's commitment to the city-state. The license comes after Coinbase received in-principle approval from MAS earlier this year. Uh, It enables the company to expand its offerings of digital payment token services to both retail and institutional clients in Singapore. So yes, another big piece of information for Coinbase expansion. And like I said, like Coinbase is going to expand all over the world. They're trying to catch up to Binance. Obviously, they're ahead of a Binance in the United States. But for the rest of the world's market, they are actually trying to catch up. And there's way more money to be made right now outside the U.S. than in the U.S. because of certain SEC regulators. 
So Singapore has emerged as a crypto hub, with 25% of residents considering crypto the future of finance. The city-state is also home to over 300, uh, 700 Web3 companies. And of course, in the recent months, Coinbase has rolled out Singapore-specific products, including pay now and fast bank transfers. So this makes them fully legit in Singapore. They're continuing to expand internationally, and Coinbase has a very bright future. Definitely a good buy if you're actually into crypto stocks. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.